What's going on, people? Today, we're going to talk about how to be successful, reprogramming your life for progress. Small, consistent change looms large. That is what is on the table for today. One of the things I want to make clear is many people are attempting to become better. You know, if you're making more money than you're currently making, you've become better in some aspect without becoming better. There are many people who don't want to change. They don't want to give to get. It's a very fascinating dynamic, which is why that one of the reasons that I'm doing this stream, because you're not going to get to where you want to go unless you change certain aspects of yourself. Uh, one of the things that I've done, and it's very shocking, it is kind of crazy. I'm in the process of reprogramming my workout. It's taken me many, many, many months to get the eating down because it has to be a sustainable process. You know, these fad diets and stuff. I've never, fortunately, never gotten into them, but they can wreck your body. So I've started working on, I've always had rather large legs and a big butt, but my upper body is dominant. So I've like totally reprogrammed. It's like three days of legs, just one day of upper body. I really don't need a lot more upper body development. I need to get cut. So I've thrown out squats. I've stopped doing deadlifts. So I focus on, I have a front squat machine and I start focusing on front squats, which because I had a low bar squat to get the most weight, because my, my goal, my programming was to lift as much weight. So I was squatting 500 pounds for reps, but my legs were not as big as they could be. I would see guys in the gym who could not squat nothing like I could squat. They couldn't. I'm talking about all the way to the ground. Boom, boom, five, six reps. So during my reprogramming phase, I was like, okay, I need more lower leg development. So I started doing front squats and the squat machine. Now, this is the kicker because I had been programmed for this heavy back squat, mid back squat. To get the most weight that you know when you do the front squat you're supposed to do this you're supposed to go back right but my body my mechanics were designed to go like that we're only talking about an inch maybe two inches of movement if that right but it's very very big so i literally started with the bar even though i could back squat 500 pounds I just start with the bar because my form I didn't have any form I didn't have any uh, neuro pathways uh, my body hadn't been not been programmed and conditioned from the front squat so I just kind of relaxed just like you know what we're going to commit to this we're going to do this this was about two months ago well something really really spooky happened it was spooky and it was eerie I'm still squatting with the bar. Then I get up to 135 after four weeks because my form was terrible. I, I struggled. You know, there was choking and all other kind of stuff because I just wasn't used to having the bar on my shoulders like that. But I stuck with it. So the first month, I probably squatted five, six sets, five to ten reps. That was it because the conditioning was off. Well, very interesting thing happened when I got to 135 because in you know, the second month, I was able to put weight on the bar. I was able to do reps. Form improved. I was going low and some strange, strange changes happened. The Camerons, we had the big booties, Gene and our family. So I had a real big booty. It is what it is. But I noticed that I was wearing sweatpants and you ever have some sweatpants who were too big because I did lose weight. 
So that was another reason. But I was actually stepping on my sweatpants. Because unbeknownst to me, because I don't see it, my butt got smaller. That's interesting because, you know, I stopped the stimulus from the heavy squats, right? So that's like, this is interesting. And my shorts went hung lower, even though I had them pulled up because, you know, once again, I lost weight. Then I was messing around the other day. And I noticed that my mid thigh down to my knee is way bigger. I was like, what? I mean, I see muscles I haven't seen in years. I was like, wait a minute. Only 135. I can do 185 for about four reps now and keep the form. After that, the form starts breaking down, so I stop because I've committed to this. And I was like, you know what? If it takes six months, it's going to take six months because I have the power to squat 500 pounds, but I don't have the form. I don't have the support muscle strength it ain't there yet and it's going to take months for me to get there but i've realized that my legs have literally grown two inches i want you to really think about that i am lifting 500 pounds back squat but my conditioning and my programming were for the heavy back squat my conditioning and my programming wasn't for big legs. So I've, you know, because it's, it's, it's blowing my mind. I'm like, wait a minute. I'm getting bigger leg development from like way less weight. I say all this to set the stage to the power of reprogramming yourself. You're not going to get where you want to get being who you are right now. Because if you were going to get where you were going to get being who you are right now, you'd be there. You're going to have to reprogram yourself. You're going to have to actually start over in some cases with certain thought processes, certain perspectives. Um, I did a video the other day. Entrepreneurship is the cure for racism. And I had, fortunately, the Hoteps listen. I had one who was trying to come in there. Have you heard of the Tulsa riots? It's like, yeah. Have you heard of Robert Smith? People have not really investigated that. And I want you to go ahead and go to the Google machine and check me out. There were only 3,000 residents in Tulsa. 3,000. Not to marginalize their deaths. Not to marginalize the atrocities that were cast upon that city. It was 3,000 people. But for some reason, a man who employs 55,000 people. Well, the people in Tulsa were wealthier than he is. Mathematically, it does not add up. But once again, what are we talking about? Programming. We're talking about people who are instituted with a certain level of programming. Until that internal programming changes, you can, Jesus can come down and say, look, this is the deal. And because their program that says, Jesus, you're wrong. They can be like, Jesus, that ain't the case. They would argue with Jesus because their programming has them led astray. The Trump people, excuse me, the cult of Trump. I don't care what anyone says that that that's a cult. Lying. You know what? Let, let, let's go ahead and go with the, the Pookie Nim example. Let's say Pookie, Ray Ray, and Leroy were in the car. Pookie had some weed on him. Ray Ray and, uh, let's see, and uh, Leroy did not know that Pookie had weed on him. Pookie pulls out a blunt, starts smoking. All of a sudden, Ray Ray. And Leroy like, hey, man, put that out. Whoop. Cop pulls over. There's clearly weed in the car. The cop, following normal and reasonable protocol, arrests all three of them for suspicion of possession. This happens every day. But in the code of Trump, Flynn, Manafort, Papadopoulos, it, it does not matter. 
But if you were to go to the Code of Trump and give out the example of Pookie Nam, Leroy, and Ray Ray, you, well, more than likely, they were all guilty. I mean, there was one of them that had some weed. But you apply that same logic to an administration that's had several people indicted. It's a, no, it's fake news. It's fake news. It's fake news. And I, I go there not to get political, but to show you the power of programming. Donald Trump is the architect of one of the greatest mental hacks in history. He has programmed people that he has their best interests at heart when he doesn't. He has programmed people that he's going to make the economy better when it was already decent, but now it's starting to go down. This is the power of programming. This is the power of indoctrination. This is the power of understanding human nature. This is the programming. Because I've been having this fight with the hoteps for years. And on my Facebook page, there's another fight. And I hit them with this challenge. I'm not going to show it to you because I, I don't want y'all going there. But uh, I'm going to tell you what I put up there because right now I'm running a counter program. If you're going to go on and on about so-called white supremacy, but have no solutions, solutions require money or you're not self-employed or a business owner, you're just kidding yourself. You don't want to end white supremacy. You just want to be inside the house with Mr. Charlie licking his boots. Because see, once you talk reason and logic to people who are programmed, it, it, it just, it bounces off of them. But when you get to the core of who they are, when you start saying stuff that they find offensive because it's true, this creates a chasm because they, they got all mad about that. And then, you know, for those of you, and I want you to look it up. Uh, how many of you are familiar with A.G. Gaston? One of the first black millionaires. You know, A.G. Gaston's the one that bailed King out of jail. A.G. Gaston single-handedly jump-started the civil rights movement. He had money. Malcolm X, the nation of law, Islam, they had money. The Tea Party, $216 million spent by the Koch brothers. They had money. You can have the best intentions in the world, but unless you've got some money and structure behind your organization, it ain't going nowhere. It's just not. It's just too much that has to happen. But going back to me throwing that verbal grenade into the pack of wolves because as long as we were going counterpoint counterpoint because i stopped after like two posts that's like oh this this is what i'm dealing with let me go ahead and ratchet it up <sighs> boom they are howling like a pack of dogs going off blah, 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 blah. but see now i've planted that seed because i spoke their language and this is another thing that we talked guys and i did the video on uh, disruptive male, how many men don't like alpha male. And once again, it's the same thing. You're trying to create this programming that only you yourself understand. You can't indoctrinate anybody with that because when you say I'm a Sigma male, people are like, what's that? You say I'm an Omega male. Really? What's that? Is that a cartoon character? But when you say, I'm an alpha male. Oh, everyone knows what that is. Oh, you're strong. You're dominant. You're aggressive. Okay, I got it. But for some reason, these people don't understand the power of language. Because they have been programmed for some dumb stuff. <laughs> they have been programmed <laughs> for some felonious stuff. But once again, people don't understand this because people do what they do. And since we no longer have first and second and third generations talking to each other because your grandmother was like baby that's wrong i know you think you're right but that's wrong you know people would tell you now people are developing their philosophies and their programming in silos and then they're going to an echo chamber and they think that they're thinking correctly and normally and reasonably because it's reinforced that's the cult part and that that's one of the things because uh, this is probably going to happen on No Shades channel because we're going to do the um, 
I'm gonna throw some more bombs. I'm gonna throw some more grenades in the hotel pack of hotels. Oh, oh, oh shit! Oh shit! Got on it like yes, I like this. Oh, it should be interesting. But yeah, the, the the thing is, like I discovered after years of working out, uh, I'm not trying to get big anymore. I figure I'll get down to like a tight 245 and probably another year or nine months. I'm much closer. But because I've reprogrammed myself, I've main, been able to maintain consistent results and not get injured because I'm on a different program. If you're trying to make money and you're still using the same programming that you have, you're going to fail. I don't think that I've really broken that down the way that I'm breaking it down now because I became reprogrammed in that boarding house. Many of the things that I thought to be true, and normal and reasonable, they were shattered. It's like you work hard, you work 40 hours. You do a good job. You keep your nose clean. You get a haircut. You go to church on Sundays. Nothing bad is supposed to happen to you. A lot of bad stuff happened. Because I, I am still blown away at how big my thighs have gotten just doing 135. But once again, the program. Because I'm doing front squats and if I lean forward, the weight falls in my arms. So I have to maintain a certain posture that puts all of the focus on my lower legs. The power of programming, the power of reprogramming. I am using half the weight that I used to and I'm getting better results. Let me say this again. I'm using less than half the weight I used to and I'm getting better, more desired results because I took it apart. I broke it apart and I said, okay, what do we want? How are we going to do it? What we're willing to give up? And I had to give up the power mail because, you know, there's a thumbnail um, where you can see I was big. I was swole. I was swole nation. And that just isn't the goal anymore because, you know, years ago I was with this Uber driver and he said something that was very startling. There are no 300 pound old people. You'll get some like maybe 240, 250 and they're tall, but he was right. You don't see any 300 pound old people. That, that still resonates to this day. So a big thing, because there, there's so many parallels between dating, fitness, business, because they all have processes that must be followed in a certain sequence for you to get results. Because there's different outcomes for doing these things, but the sequencing and the process is the same. First of all, there must be a process. There are many people trying to make money. There's no process. There's no program. They just out here hustling. I got a t-shirt design. Uh, is um, hard work. Is the, let's see. The law of attraction is disguised as hard work. I'm thinking about doing that one. Because so many things happen in this space because um, I believe everyone can make at least five to 10 times more money than they currently make it. I, I really believe that in my heart of hearts. So if you're making 30, you can make 150. If you're making 30, you might be able to make 300K. But I believe everyone can do 150 to maybe 180. But here's the thing. It's going to be boring. The things that you will have to do consistently and over and over again are not exciting. They're not entertaining. They just work because they're part of a process that's part of a larger system. Because, you know, you have people up here because uh, one of my uh, people I'm consulting with, we've had this, you know, this we talked twice and he has an online business. And he has no process and we start the process and just in two, two sessions, he's realized $2,000 additional this month. He paid $3,000 for the program. Processes and systems, because uh, that's what we're going to talk about 
and Hustler Undergrad. And I should let you guys know because I'm getting a lot of questions. The art of holding companies is included in Hustler Undergrad. I just separated that because there's some people who just wanted that. But um, come Friday, I'm going to look at the price and I may make a change. Just depends. I got certain metrics. But this programming thing is very, very important and it's rooted in discipline. It's rooted in consistency. I, I'll throw something else out. I cannot eat the way that I used to eat. And this is the same thing with money. I literally can't spend like I used to spend. I know it's going to sound crazy. I got a credit card with a very large limit. Anytime I get to 10% of that limit, I start freaking out. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Because uh, one time I actually cut a statement and I think I had like 10 grand on that card. I was like, who are the, who, whoa, whoa, who are, wait a minute, wait a minute. Went to the bank, instantly paid that off. I said, whoa, whoa. It was typically, because I got busy, but typically I pay it off every week and I just got clueless. But I, once I looked, I, said, I freaked out. I'm not paying any interest. As long as it's paid within 59 days, so I'm paying the interest. But once again, I've programmed myself to not allow myself to run my credit card up to a point where it's going to, I'm going to have to make payments. I program myself um, where my accounts, which have money in it, when they get low, I've programmed myself to stop spending. When I get to a certain point and money that is allocated for this and this, I don't dip into that. I'm like, this is what I got to work with. And I will teach you guys a very creative way to extract money out of your business because that's going to be the first thing because we're going to talk about this house and I'll show you pictures and stuff. Um, it's going to be very interesting. I'm definitely going to move up the art of holding companies webinar because uh, I see that I'm going to have to. But I'm going to teach you how to set up a holding company an operating LLC and save money and make money without earning money. Let me say this again, how you can make money, save money without earning money. And it's going to be really big because once I do it, because this webinar is going to be very different from anything else I've ever done before. But yeah, I freak out. I, I literally freaked out when my credit card got to that point. All right, so let's see what, what we got in here. Not to me in the chat room, but just to let you guys know, tomorrow is Friday, I believe, and I'm gonna be looking at that price point. But um, currently for one fifty nine ninety nine, you can get into Hustlers Undergrad, and it's twenty payments, twenty months, no more after that, and then you are graduated into Disruptive Money, the consulting program. So we, we will definitely rock out with that. And if you don't need that right now, you can get the Art of Holding Companies for $99.99 times 15 months. So we'll, we'll see what happens tomorrow. What's up, Hard Breakdown? If anyone has any questions about Hustlers Undergrad, go ahead and ask while I dig into this chat. What's up, Western? I'm seeing a lot of new faces up here. What's up, Ganja? Michael, Fester the MGTO changes hard. I've been backsliding the last year and a half. One of the things that you have to do, Fester, is you have to put in, like, you know, when the stock market, how you put in stops and calls, like on my credit card, even though I can go way further than 10 grand, I have a stop. It's like once we get here, nothing else happens. So you've got to do that. Uh, but the backsliding is part of the process. It's just not to let the backsliding go. Because what used to happen to me, I would be doing really well. And then I would have one bad day. And one bad day, it turned into two bad days. And it turned into three. And it turned into a week. It turned into a month. And it turned into two months. Then it turned into three months. Then um, I've lost all my games. <laughs> like six months, starting all over again. And you feel disgusted and defeated. 
but you just got to pick yourself up. And the thing is, backsliding a day or even a week is not really going to throw you off track that much. It may actually, you know, depending upon. <laughs> All righty then. Let's see. Well, you can still see me. It's kind of funny because I did not set up another camera. Or can I? Let me see. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> but we will hold on. That's funny. Once again, if you have any questions about Hustlers Undergrad, go ahead and ask. While I uh, kind of fix this a little bit. <laughs> I think I can fix it. Yeah. All right. That is crazy how that happened. All right. Cool. We're back. <laughs> I don't know what happened. But, you know, fortunately, I'm glad I left that camera still plugged in. I was going to unplug it. All right. Gunge, I started getting about six to seven hours of sleep. Was operating on three to four for nearly three years. I'm feeling less anxious. Sleep is a big part of overall health. Um, I am slowly backing down from the 16 hour days and stuff because I'm down to about consistently 12, 11. And part of the efficiency plan is to get to, you know, a 10 hour day, eight, 10 hour day. Cutting social media out. Like once again, those fools, they, they're going off. I, I'm not, I'm not getting back into it with them. Awesome, Fester. I appreciate that. What's up, Claude? Oh, yeah, we're going to get into a lot of training. Well, some freakouts are good and some freakouts are bad. Uh, I think a freakout where you reach a certain level with your finances, where you know you need to stop. I think that's okay. Definitely. It is a mindset because success is essentially doing proper things consistently. It ain't sexy. It's, it's, it can get boring at times, but that's what will get you the results. Or it can be extremely hard. Like, uh, you know, Kobe Bryant just went to talk to Nick Saban and the team. And he was just talking about the process and how many people don't learn how to love the process. Because one of the reasons I make money is I continue to do the same thing over and over again. I've been doing the same thing for years. And every time I deviate and try to do something new, my results go down. <laughs> so <laughs> it's real interesting how that happens. Pretty much. Dear though cousins. Um, you can do case studies. Rick James, I love that name. Ganja, the media is the media, man. Because I see false stories of on all of them, the stuff that I know not to be true. Yeah, A.G. Gaston was the man. A lot of people just don't know who this guy was. It's amazing. NC Administrative Consultant LLC, you need to bring more than your voice to the table. Absolutely. And that's what a lot of people who do, they keep regurgitating the same stuff. They have no program. They have no process. It's just, this is how I feel. And they'll be saying stuff that is historically accurate. And that's it. They won't. They will not add any new wrinkles to their their message. Uh, that's one level of programming. Definitely fear. I like that stuff. On most hotels, know just enough about Black history to be outraged, but in their outrage, they forgot to look at Black history, which would be inspired. There's a lot to be inspired by too. 
One of my friends said this. He said, um, people are not interested in ending white supremacy. They just want a better place in it. And I find that to be very true, even though, to me, white supremacy is like a dog with no teeth. That, that's pretty much what it is at this state. Christian, what's up? Becoming big is overrated. Yeah, I've changed because uh, someone, someone's like, man, you look smaller. I am smaller and going to get a little smaller, probably another 20 pounds. But I'm going to give myself a year to do it because one of the things I've learned on my little journey is if you lose it and keep it off for a long period of time, your body resets at that weight. That's why when people do these crash diets and they lose all that weight, then it comes back so quick because their body's still trying to hold on to it. Your body is an amazing machine. It will do many things that will jack you up. Social media is going to go through many changes. Theodore, yes, it is. It's very amazing. What's up, Cashmatic? Oh, you used to be with the whole taps? I didn't know that, Ganja. Robbie Rob, one thing that really bugs me is how white people play such a big role in a lot of these pro-black movements. I mean, th this is one of the things. You know, most historically black colleges were started by white people. It's just the fact, and you know, our, I know it's designated black history, but it should be designated American history because it's everyone's history. What's up, Edward? What's up, America? Yeah, because we don't have these... Um, we don't have the respect that we used to have for the old people. We just don't. Unless you go to certain neighborhoods, you'll see certain neighborhoods where the tribes and them they, they're flourishing. Uh, Michael, what examples of white people taking huge roles in pro-black movements? Uh, George Soros funded Black Lives Matter. I don't think you can get any deeper role in that. Awesome Fester. Man, they, they hate me. I did not Dr. Funk. I learned a long time ago lifting weights and smalls amount of weights doing burnout reps gets me more results. Yeah, because uh I'm not even doing burnout reps. I'm like, my rep range is between eight and 10, six, eight and 10. I don't try. I don't max out. I don't, you know, I've done a few two and three, but I don't go for the one singles. I just stop that. <laughs> I want a name. I don't think Bernie's going to run. My credit card's maxed out. <laughs> That's funny. Hold on. We just jumped. Good Lord. Uh, you got a lot of programs on the Disruptive Mail page. You mean disruptivemail.org? Actually, yeah, there's not, there's, that actually kind of took a back seat to Hustlers Undergrad. Uh, it will happen. It will happen because that's another thing that I've done. Uh, pretty much sticking to one thing for a minute before jumping to something else. And there's been a lot of people who've been talking about disruptive mail. It'll get built because one of the reasons that I'm going with Hustlers undergrad is, and that this is something that goes on in the group, is the default is to talk about women, to talk about how to get women, how women are doing wrong. I talk about women, but also handle my business. We need more stuff on the business end. What's up, bro? Brawley Khan, Randall Riley, Pamela C. Fred Edwards, feminism will be dead. I actually agree with that because a lot of the younger women don't want anything to do with it. 
What's up, G J Gaines? Uh, we'll see, Rick James. I'm just saying that if you want to get in at 159.99, you you probably want to move tonight. Uh, Marquette, we'll be talking about that in the power holding companies. Oh man, just like one of my coworkers has all kinds of candy for everyone to take and every time I pass by. That's something I don't really deal with because I remember how people would bring cakes and cookies to the break room and it would be like this mad dash or you wouldn't get any. I don't really have to deal with that. But yeah, that could be very, very tempting. What's up, Patrick? I've been building processes and systems for top companies and they pay top dollar. Oh, yeah, because if you can build a system. After you're gone, that system is still going to make money for many years. When I was at Renacrate, six, no, 12 months after I left, they were still making money off the work I had did. 12 months. They got their money out of me easily. Yep, we'll be talking about real estate. Fred, Malcolm X was a genius. And a lot of people have picked MLK. I think they both were great. But a lot of people picked MLK over Malcolm, and I don't really think that there was a stylistic difference, but the message was essentially the same. People need to do for self. Nobody. Uh, first, you should change your, your avatar name. Nobody is very negative. Uh, experiment. You're 25 years old. Good Lord, David must have had a lot of stuff on his mind. Pretty much because like take losing weight. When I really started losing weight was when my diet became consistent. I'm going to say some. I have Twinkies like every other day. I don't have a cheat day. I eat whatever I want. But I just don't eat as much of it and I don't eat it at certain times. I found out that certain carbs have a serious effect on me. Like I can eat anyone heard of a buckwheat pancake or buckwheat, buckwheat waffles. I can eat that does nothing to me. I can eat Twinkies does nothing to me. But if I eat a cupcake from this bakery, I will literally put on a pound and a half because I'm holding water. So you, you kind of got to figure out what works for you. Oh, Ben, Ben don't play. Ben and Steph, they don't play with folks. Once they see that we have a crazy person, and I like to give a shout out to the moderators because if you see that the comment section has been much cleaner and we just don't have all this foolishness, someone that will come in while we're having this stream, while we're having this discussion, is someone who isn't interested in getting better. They just want attention. That's all they want. They just want attention. Uh, Larry, Michael, depends on you. You might be a night owl. Your best time to get off the rest may be during the day. It depends. You got to play with it. Uh, I think we're going to do it August 30th. Oh, yeah, that's one of that's some from one of the um, it was from the first house I had after the boarding house. It was in the basement. I asked the owner, could I have it? And they're like, yeah. And then my partner framed it. Oh, man, YouTube is rough. That's why if you can make it on YouTube, woo. I did not know that, 89 Dr. Funk. I did not know that. Dale Carnegie funded Frederick Douglass for his school. Oh, I, I've done. I made a lot of changes because there, there was this debate. People like I thought it was the camera angle. I was like, oh, I'm gonna keep losing. 
bad wolf MMA. Keep fighting the good fight. I love how you're always looking to mentally and financially to grow. Keep experiencing and passing along your findings. Yeah, because the thing is, most people are locked into a scarcity mindset. And this is another scarcity mindset. I see it all over the internet. Like, well, you got money. Why are you selling courses? You got money. Why aren't you doing this? You got money. Why don't you have a Lambo? These are people with very limited mindsets. Everybody that I know that makes money is trying to make more. They didn't go like, well, I got two million. I'm good. Because they know inflation, the erosion, the account. There's a lot of things that if you just had like a big chunk of money, that money can be eaten up to taxes, inflation, all kinds of stuff. Divorce. Do, 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 do. Anthony, I was programmed to hold on to my stocks for dear life, but this this Chinese company was losing me bread, so I took that couple of grand and put it on the sidelines with the others waiting for the meltdown. Douglas Jones, Black Titan, A.G. Gaston's The Making of a Black American Millionaire by Carol Jenkins and Elizabeth Gardner Hines. There are so many things in Birmingham that have A.G. Gaston's name on it. The A.G. Gaston Boys Club. There's so many because, you know, the company's still in business. A.G. Gaston Life Insurance. Kinderwood. High intensity training and lightweight. Yeah, I still want to have some muscle, though. I'm not going to, like, completely abandon it. It's just more of an old school bodybuilder type workout. Close them, Jay Gaines. Rick James, you need to go ahead and buy. That's all I'm going to say. David, oh, good Lord. David's a pervert. Once again, I think, you know, everyone has to play around with foods because um, I used to have these crazy weight swings, like literally six and eight pounds in a week. It was because I'm very sensitive to sodium. So I've really cut out a lot of sodium and that helped because typically my float is like literally a pound I gain a pound when I have like a, a, a salty meal or something just literally a pound workout because um, typically I eat halfway well I don't even want to say clean I eat on my program for two or three days then I'll have a day where I eat whatever and that's typically when the flow to happen then I get back on my program and I I go right back. Definitely. You know, I used to like MLK more. A lot of people come to that decision, man. Thank you, D. Nelson. Stan Lee said he used Malcolm and Martin as models for X-Men characters Magneto and Charles Xavier. You can actually see that. That's really cool. Pittsburgh Steelers. I don't know anything about tax liens. So you need to check out Erica. She's all over that. Yeah, nutrition is everything, man. It really is. I mean, when you know that Ben, that Ben that put that out there, or no, um, you can actually see that. Yeah, because really, it's about your habits and your mindsets. You have to change those. 
Yeah, I know, Christian. Uh, I'm going to do moderate weights because, like, I still, I still lift heavy weights, but I don't go, I don't max out like I used to. Uh, maybe three reps. I'm trying to get away with that because I'm trying to do like my last set of five reps as heavy as I can go because uh, I have muscle memory as well. I used to be swole, so when the, when I lowered the weight and got to higher reps, a lot of that stuff started coming back. So that's it. All right. So apparently there are no questions. You can go below and you can hit the link. Now, this is how it happens. I'll tell you the story. Because when I first created the Hustlers, it was a Hustlers, HustlersKungFu.com. That was the first set. Then my internet provider, the hosting company, because I didn't want to buy another package from them. They just completely canceled everything so my site disappeared so i had to go with hustlers kung fu life skills and then i renewed hustlers kung fu but by then the site had gotten too big to change the name and then when i was using hustler stripe didn't like the word hustler they have no problem with disruptive but they didn't like hustler so when you sign up within 24 hours because i've been really pretty much on it because i probably got like three or four to do and i'll do them after the stream where I'll add you and send you all your information and tell you how to get started. So that, that there's a little process, but it's not too bad. Uh, LRA, check your emails because I addressed, I already fixed that for you like two, three days ago. Check your emails. And also, what you can do once you get your login credentials, you can go in and change it to whatever email you want. If you just, cause whatever email that you pay with PayPal, that's the email that I use. And I had a lot of people like, hey, I don't want to use that email. Like then why did you, you can add more emails to PayPal. Let's see. Yeah, because like I still do overhead press. I still do deadlifts. I just don't go nowhere near as heavy as I used to because I was close to 700 on the deadlift. And I had aches and pains, <laughs> like this this pain in my shin. I knew where it came from. And once I eased up on the weight, I'm probably just not going to go super heavy again. I'm not going to be a competitive power lifter, so I'm not going to try to do that stuff. I'll still try to increase the weight because I saw, um, God, Rory, dude is 62 years old. He looks like he's 25. Seriously, arms big and everything, but he never like, he never stopped training. Yeah, check your email. Uh, nope. Big M one, one ten. Nope. We ain't doing that. Um, the reason I did that is there's a lot of people who got the first Hustlers Kung Fu and I go through there. They've never opened up a course. I'm not doing that anymore. Uh, also the, once again, with the information that we'll put in, you start your business that 150 should be cake. <laughs> it should be cake. Oh yeah, there's a, cause see, when, when I get to the new place, a lot of this stuff is going to change. And that's kind of why I am uh, trying to set up because I'll be able to do this setup, and I'll have like the, the basement in the new place is literally four times as large as this area down here, which is the basement. It's four times, maybe six times. So you'll be able to see that. Yeah, because um, my my goal is to look like a vintage bodybuilder-ish. Because, you know, I'm probably not going to walk around with a six-pack all the time. But kind of close to that look.
Samuel C. Armstrong, son of missionaries and Union Army vet, found at Hampton University in 1868. I mean, the the, the history is just intertwined with it. The, yeah, I know I'm going to get hit over the head by the whole test, but there there were some there were a lot of good white people. I know, I know, I know. We ain't supposed to say stuff like that. But there was a lot of good white people. There was a lot of white people who did not believe in slavery, and some of them died trying to end it. These are facts, but people don't want to talk about that. They're all cave people. They're dwellers and all this other crazy stuff. Oh, no. Uh, Big M110, it is is $159.99 a month. Whatever is below this video. Because I I know there was some where I had the $290, but... After people came to me in mass and like, look, man, I just found your channel. I was like, you know what? Fine. I'll do one fifty nine ninety nine until Friday and see what happens. Uh, Matthew Campbell, how can I get started with selling courses? People just keep telling me. Facebook, how many of y'all know that Facebook has literally lost half its traffic in the last two years? I was wondering why everybody was running to YouTube. All these Facebook folks had all these Facebook ads. Now they were all on YouTube. Now I know why. Because <laughs> it was just like, hey, we're just expanding our base. No. <laughs> Facebook doesn't have the inventory of traffic that it used to have. Anthony Johnson, I will go into all of that in the course. Uh, the future looks bright if you're properly positioned. I started this company in a recession. See, it's about having assets, having the right mindset and being positioned. Like if you got a lot of debt right now, you're going to be in trouble. If you got a shaky job, you're going to be in trouble. But if you're positioned, this recession is going to be the beginning of a lot of multimillionaires. Nope, hadn't moved yet. Connections. I'm an artist. What course should I take to sell better? I know this is going to sound strange, but um, you probably need the mindset course because if you make beautiful art and art is subjective, you got to believe in your art enough to ask for a lot of money for it. Pretty much. Oh, I don't, I ignore those people. Eighty nine Dr. Funk, the new stuff is going to be the webinars. Let me tell you, twice a month, we're going to have an in-depth webinar. It's not going to be like stuff I've done before because I'm working on the first one, which once I get it done, I may go go ahead and say, look, I'm getting ready to do it and give people an update. Because if you're in Hustlers undergrad, you have your own email list. And I sent out an email like 60 percent open it. So some people are not getting it. And I'm going to work on that. But essentially, there's an email address where I can just send everybody a link to the webinars. I can send everybody an update to the course. It's a beautiful thing. So the first thing is, you know, it's going to be the Art of Holding Companies, which is going to be five or six sessions. And they're going to be what I call self-contained sessions. Like the first one's going to be like, I'm getting this house. I'm going to explain everything, the, the strategy behind it, the legality behind it. And then we're going to get, because the thing is, Everyone can start a holding company right now because your operating company is what's going to you know, run your business. Your holding company, the money passes up. So we're going to talk about that, the philosophy behind that, what you should do, how you should do it, why you should set it up. If you single, why you really need to set it up, stuff like that. Hmm. Huh. Because like I said, I have just completely left crypto. I felt that once I made my first prediction that when the summer came and money came out the market, that it would fall and it did. And it, here's my second prediction. Kids are back in school. There's money to be put in the market. If we go until December and people and, and Facebook is still doing these little mini crashes, it's just going to crash all the way down to about three grand. How does Bitcoin value go up? Demand. Demand is there. Price goes up. 
Demand is not there, price goes down. I say uh, Malik Turner, next 15 months, 15, 16 months. Your college, your, with this, I'm going to leave. The brand, your mother is wrong. I don't have a degree and I've gotten many loans. You need money <laughs> and a good credit score. That's all they care about. All right, I'll see you guys later. For any of those who are interested in Hustlers Undergrad, links below. And if you don't want that, you can get into the Art of Holding Company. The price is not going to change until like Friday if it changes. So we'll see. So with that, I'll see you guys later. Peace, love, hair grease, and all that jazz.